guys, we're going to start off with a little something special for all of you. The share screen. Sure have, Mariah. She said, I have shut out the noise. I'm more prepared than I've ever been. Wow, what a moment that was. And ladies and gentlemen, oops, uh, we have our very own Mariah Bell with us here today and Chris Phillips, um, our athletic trainer and um, CSCS uh, certified. And we're so excited to have everybody here today to, to talk a little bit about returning to the ice. Um, and I think we're all getting really excited to um, get back in the ranks again. And we're getting very close, but I think it's very important to make sure that you do it in a safe way. So we thought what better people to have to talk to you all today than Mariah and Chris today. So um, with that, I'd like to welcome our guest, our special guest speakers, uh, Chris Phillips and Mariah Bell. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. You know, it's, it's funny. It's like it's one of the things that that we start. We've been talking about for a while, but a lot of people have been home. A lot of people have been doing stuff at home, but especially in the skating world. And in my background was a lot of years in the NHL. Um, transitioned to a lot of figure skating the last few years, and skating is different from anything you do off the ice. And I think the one thing that we need to really kind of hit on is that we're prepared when we get back on the ice and that we kind of do a slow progression, kind of moving back in and not just kind of jump in where we left off. You know, there's going to be, you know, we had talked, I think, when was the, when was the last time you were off the ice for three months? Yeah, never. <laughs> you know, and you look at that and everybody's in the same boat, you know, and, and you're trying to take, you know, this is a new ground for everyone and it's, you know, a long time off the ice, and we need to start to make sure that we do the right things getting back on the ice to stay healthy. Because the last thing we want to see now is, you know, somebody getting hurt and missing, you know, now we're finally getting ready to get back on the ice. We get back on the ice, and then, you know, you get hurt, and you're going to be out for another, you know, four or six weeks. That's the last thing we want to see, you know. So I think the, the biggest part is making sure we're preparing both off the ice to get ready, and then once we get on is not overdoing it and preparing on the ice and, and taking that slow progression of, you know, doing the easy stuff and then starting to progress to the harder stuff and not start jumping in. And if you were on the ice three hours a day, six days a week, maybe drop that off to every other day and spread it out a little bit and not go too far because we don't want to either see an acute injury or something that happens right away or even developing an, an overuse injury like over time and over, you know, over a week or two starting to do stuff that the body's just not ready for. Great, great. Yes, and, and so I think, you know, for our, our viewers today, we've got all kinds of um, levels here. And I see a lot of little ones out there with your, your parents, I'm sure, um, are watching with you. So for the parents too, you know, if you have any questions that you wanted to ask, you know, I think you're going to have a lot of different levels and, um, you know, feel free to ask a question in the chat box, uh, which is in your, at the bottom of the screen. You can click on that and ask any questions. We also have a number of coaches um, on the call tonight, many of our own coaches. So coaches too, please don't be shy. If there are specific questions you wanted to ask, you know, um, Mariah or Chris about, you know, their thoughts on how to return to the ice safely. Um, you know, feel free to ask your questions. Um, yes, yeah, so, so, so Chris, you know, like I, I think, um, is there anything that you would like to say maybe for, depending on the levels, like for like the little ones, um, any, any specific advice that you have uh, or, you know, any there other exercises that you would say, hey, you know, make sure you do, or things to, you know, to check on your own body. Um, I think one of the big things, Alex, is, is starting to get active again, you know, and starting to move and, and get out, and especially for the younger ones, go out and be a kid, run around, kick a ball around, start to be moving, um, you know, start to be active, start to do some jumps, some things that your, your coaches may have had you do off the ice, start to do some of those again, do some squats, do some lunges, do some stretching. How many of you have been stretching throughout this whole time? You know, and those are some things that I think are very simple, especially for the younger ones can start to do. Um, you know, just be active, you know, and then the thing for some of the parents too, is to realize that we've got to cut down on the amount of hours right off the bat. It's, it's, it's hard because everybody wants to get back. Everybody wants to do things, but it's how do we start to limit that so that we don't start to do too much 
and develop, get fatigue, and then develop into an overuse injury or, or a muscle strain that, again, is going to kick us out. And I think, you know, the one thing that's great when we talked initially to have Mariah is let her go over a couple of things that, you know, she's got the better background on this part than I do of, hey, some things that we talked this morning about, like doing more edge work, yeah. you know, and limiting jumps. And maybe that's where you can kind of pick up a little bit and, yeah. and throw in some of your advice. Yeah, for sure. I mean, first of all, this is like a very special situation in time that we're all in in the kind of silver lining, I think, is that we're all in it together. So this is a situation we're all going through. And it's really important, like Chris said, to really take your time getting back into it. I know nobody's been at full training capacity, you know, and, um, you know, we're all going to work our way back into that. As it, as it, you know, relates to sports specific, you know, figure skating on the ice, um, I would say something that I know that I'm going to try to do when I am back is, just to make sure that I'm, like Chris said, working on edge work. You know, if you think of, you have all these goals and things that you want to achieve, and that's the top of your mountain, the bigger the base of your mountain, the higher you can go. So really work on the basics. I don't think any of us right now have any competitions on the horizon that we know are happening. So this is a really special time to just really take an, a moment to work on basics. I know, you know, if this was a normal year, and I was training normally, I don't think I would be taking as much time as I planned to on the basics. So that's really important. Take advantage of that. Take advantage of this situation where it's, you know, we don't, we aren't really sure what's happening, but we're fortunate to soon be back on the ice and really take advantage of um, working on your basics. You'll be better for it anyway, but it's a, a surefire way to prevent, uh, you know, getting injured right off the bat for sure. Mm -hmm. Alex, I think one thing too, and, and we talked about, you know, yeah, there's 8 million exercises everybody can do, but the big thing is just be active, start to get out, start to move. The, as you go up the levels, hey, guess what? There's going to be different things we're going to do. So some of the youngers that are on here right now, what works for you guys or what works for Mariah may not work for you guys because we're not, we're at different levels. So again, the big thing is to start to move, start to think about some of the things you do on the ice. Whether or not it's working on some balance or working on some lunges or working on some squats just to get the muscles going. Or again, doing some foam rolling and stretching because there's positions that you're going to have to get into on the ice that you may not have been in in a while. Or as the two of us sit here, we're all been sitting around for a while, which means our hip flexors get nice and tight. Well, if you have a good stride on the ice, you have to have good extension, which means your hip flexors have to be nice and flexible. So trying to get some of that flexibility is going to be something that's going to be pretty key too. Um, one thing that I wanted to touch on, I wanted you to touch on too, yeah. is is limiting the number of jumps. And we talk about it, like, especially off the ice, is what we want to limit the amount of jumps because there's going to be a lot of things that the body's not ready for. And, you know, if you're using a certain amount of jumps normally, like, where would you start back? Like, if you're at, yeah. if we're in peak conditioning time, how many jumps would you maybe do in a day versus what you would do in your first couple of weeks back? Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said initially, working on edge work. I think, you know, for at a minimum a week, that's probably all anybody should be doing. Um, there's really no need to jump into jumping. Um, but, you know, work on singles, work on doubles. As we prepare for programs, it's always a great idea. I mean, probably a lot of you don't have programs yet, as I don't either. Just working on connecting single jumps together. Add your own steps in between and connect just single jumps. Make it simple easy on your body, but slowly get back into it. And, you know, there's really no need right now to overload anything. I mean, I don't see, I mean, maybe week two, three, you can start getting back into some jumping, but, um, you know, try and think of the future and think, you know, right now I'm going to do some edge work and then I'm going to slowly get into singles, you know, do singles, do doubles, connect them and prepare yourself for eventually getting a program and then eventually being at full training capacity. But again, you know, we can't stress enough like how important it is just the basics. Even off ice, I've spent so much time um, during this whole time off the ice working on all of my basics so that when I do get back on full full training, I'll feel really strong and ready. And like uh, Chris said, you know, you have to be active. I tried a lot of different things. I was swimming a lot. I was playing tennis, things that I've never done before just to stay active, um, fun different things to do. So slowly let yourself slowly get back into it for sure um there's no need to get on the ice and feel like if you can't do anything 
what you normally do in what week one or week two or week three that you won't be there again. You'll for sure be back to your full capacity, but you have to listen to your body and just be really smart about it. Um, you know, really take the time that you need. And, and again, you'll be stronger in the end for taking the extra time. And I think one thing just to tag on is listening to your body, you know, and that's, we've, we've got some other athletes in, in different sports that have slowly gotten back into things. And I think one of the, the question marks we're having is these athletes are coming in and they're sore and why are they sore? And a lot of it's because you're using muscles you haven't used in a while. So one thing to really start to think about is, Hey, you get up in the morning, let's be honest, you first start skating the next day, you're probably going to be sore. But if that soreness lingers throughout the day and that soreness is another the following day, now we're 48 hours later, which we know delayed onset muscle soreness is 48 hours, but this is going to be in a, in a little bit of a different situation. If your legs are still sore, your body's still sore 48 hours later, we may need to think about not getting back on the ice and taking a little extra time to recover before we get back on the ice. You know, and then the other thing too is even, hey, if you have those back-to-backs where you're going maybe Monday and Tuesday, can you do the things that you normally do, especially once you warm up? So in other words, if, if you're um, dealing with a groin pain or a hip flexor pain or, or an ankle pain, and it affects the way that you skate, then we have a problem and we won't want to develop a new problem. So at the same point in time, we have to learn to decide, hey, when is it time to take a step back and take an extra day or two off? And like Mariah said, there's no... There's no competitions anywhere in the near future. So we don't have to, there's not that extra push that we have to push through. We have to push through. This is the time to be smart and take, be a little more conservative because we have more time. So if it's affecting, if you're having pain and it's affecting your stride or affecting your jumps or affecting your landings, that's a key sign to say, you know what, I need to stop doing this and take a little break and get myself healthy again, whether or not that's, just take a couple of days of rest or go on and see somebody, you know, healthcare professional that can help you feel better. Those are some things that you're going to need to do. So again, if this muscle or this pain starts to continue for more than 48 hours, or if it starts to affect the way you do things, again, your skating stride, your jumps, you know, or if it just, Hey, if it just affects you walking up and down the stairs, those are some telltale signs that we need to take a little bit of a break so we don't make it worse where we start to miss a longer period of time. I'd always, I've always said with injuries, I'd rather take an extra two or three days off now yeah. to save having to take two or three weeks off later. Absolutely. And one other thing that I'll just tag on to that too is, um, you know, the thing that I've learned the most about, you know, competing at a high level and just in general, and this can be, you can use this now, you can use this in the future, is truly just focusing on yourself. Everybody will take it at a different pace. Some people might get back into things quicker and that's great. And some people might take more time and that's great too. The best thing that you can do truly is just to focus and listen to yourself and focus on yourself, focus on doing what you need to do, not letting external, um, you know, situations kind of make you feel like you should be rushing or maybe even taking more time. Just go at your pace. Do what you feel is right for you. That's how you'll always be your most successful self. Um, so just, you know, supporting those around you, but really focusing on, you know, t doing what you need to do to just ultimately have, you know, success and be healthy and, and get back into things. Yeah, I think that's, that's got to be the key message right now is, you know, worry about yourself, pay attention to yourself, right? Take care of the details. I mean, look, you didn't get to where you are, but you're not paying attention to right. detail. Right? We need to pay attention to detail now on, this, on the small things and the little things to maintain our health and start all over. And again, we're looking at everybody's pretty much been off the ice for a few months, something that most people haven't been for a long, long time. So it's going to be like starting again. The first day, you know, some of you skaters, the first day you got on the ice, you weren't on the ice twice a day, you know, five, six days a week. You maybe started out once a week or twice a week. And we have to start to take those steps back a little bit right in the beginning to maintain health and maintain maintain our, our strength too, because we have to build that strength as we start to get forward to accomplish the things that you want to. Great, great, thank you guys. There was a question that came up as well, you know, and I think this is all really great discussion on 
everybody really focusing on your own skater's journey and your own body and your path, right? It's, that's awesome and being patient. Um, there's a question that came up about, about boots and, you know, kind of the adjustments. It was um, from Jackie to Mariah. If you have, do you have any recommendations regarding boots after taking off so much time? For example, blisters, you know, or boots may feel different, stuff like that. And, and for everybody on today, we did also have a boot and blade session that's been recorded. So if you'd want more information, you can go to our, the website and Kevin Liu from Jackson Ultima um, also provides some information there. But I would really like to see, you know, hear from Mariah, if there's anything from a skater's perspective about things that you found that you do, you know, when you're off the ice for a while and how to adjust your skates or any, any tips you have for the kids. Yeah, so in any, you know, regular season when I take a week or two off, um, this is obviously different from the situation, but even in just taking a few weeks off, you can definitely get back on and start to develop blisters. What I would say with blisters is listen to the blister. If you start to get one, get off or, you know, make an adjustment immediately. You don't want to, it might not be horrible at first, but it will be really tough, you know, the next time you put your skates on or maybe the next day. I've always tried to fight blisters and they always win. So, um, you know, and, and, you know, actually something that I found, I, I used to get cuts on like my heel I don't know if this is a great, you know, piece of advice, but um, it was a really painful cut. This is one thing that I've always found. Um, and I actually would super glue it shut and that would help kind of the pain of like the cut, cut mm -hmm. constantly opening. Um, so that's just like a random piece of information. But when, you know, getting back on, I would say if you can now put your, tie your skates, put your skates on now, tie them like you normally would walk around a little bit try to get the feeling back a little bit of actually being in your skate. Um, everybody's feet have changed, I'm sure, a little bit. Especially the younger ones, because that's the one thing it. we've seen now that we're starting to get back with us here, is the kids are all bigger. They've all hit growth spurts, right? So your feet are going to be bigger. Yeah. You're, you're, like you said, the boots are going to fit a little yeah. bit different. So parents, you know, think about that too, of like, hey, if my kid's grown two inches, and their feet are a lot bigger, those skates might not fit perfectly right yeah. in the beginning. Not that we're trying to push new skates for anybody, but you know, you need to start to keep that in mind as well. Yeah, and then another thing that I've always believed in, and I think you can agree, I've always talked to you about it too, is icing, um, just ice your feet. I think that's always been something I've done that's really helped me. Um, if you have any, we talked about it earlier, like if you have any specific spots, maybe just like icing that specific spot, um, if you feel like it's sore, um, but that's a great question. And again, it's going to be different for everybody. Maybe some people will get on and have no, their skin won't feel any different. Um, but you know, some people might really struggle and it's okay. It's okay to, for them to feel completely alien to you. Um, just again, take your time, listen to your body, um, you know, adjust maybe how you don't, don't tie them too tight. Don't tie them too loose. Take your time, especially in the first few days to figure out where it feels good, the tightness of your laces. So maybe before you were tying your skates really tight, maybe now give yourself an opportunity to play around with that a little bit. Maybe tying them really tight right away isn't the right thing to do. Um, but again, it just comes down to listening to your body um, and just trying to do what you feel is best. But um, while I have been able to rollerblade and I actually have like an old pair of skates, so I have been in my skates a lot. Um, and just in, you know, previous times off, that's always been something that's helped too. Um, so yeah, I really stress like putting your skates on, walking around in them, feeling them out a little bit, um, because again, they're probably going to feel much different. I think one thing just to add to Alex is address things right away. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let it turn into an issue. So like if you start getting a hot spot on the, you know, that's going to start to develop in a blister, don't wait until it develops into a blister. Don't wait until if you're getting a little bit of a of a lace bite, which I don't know if it's as popular in hockey. In right. hockey, yeah. we get it all the time, yeah. right? Don't wait for it to get really bad that it affects you. You know, if you get that hot spot, take care of it right away. Make sure you cover it the next time. You know, you can always. There's eight million things out there. Just sometimes, just a little bit of Vaseline over it, just to make it smooth so, or slick, so that it doesn't rub as much. Or if you're getting that lace bite when you get off and you get home, ice down right away. You know, and try to avoid, take care of these things now before they turn into an issue instead of, 
well, I'm tough. I can get through this. It's not that bad. And then three, four days later, you go out there and you can't skate because it hurts so bad. And then we've got that, again, that recovery process, which, you know, a blister versus a, a muscle strain is a totally different thing. But again, anything that keeps you off the ice, keeps you off the ice. Yeah, I hate to do them. Blisters are so serious, honestly. Like they're so small, but they're really, really serious. And another thing, too, is like, you know, you might feel like you need to get your skates punched out. Do those things. Be proactive. If you have things that are bothering you, make sure that you, like Chris said, take, you know, do what you need to do now for them. Don't wait. They won't get better. <laughs> Oh, you know, great, great message, you guys. And, and for everybody out there, yes, and especially the parents that are out there, <laughs> you know, um, I think, you know, everything that you can do to help to make the transition smoother, you know, of course, you'll have to be patient in the process and really, you know, paying attention and dealing things with uh, as they come up before it becomes worse is really critical. But I would say, you know, definitely, I, I love the idea, Mariah, of definitely getting those skates on in advance, just walking around with your guards on. Okay, you guys, make sure yeah, you <laughs> You know, and, and if you find that like they can't fit, that you're, they, you, they may not fit anymore. And it's very likely that, in, you know, when they've been off the ice for a long time, that they're, the, you know, the feet will start to spread. You know, the metatarsals, like, you know, they will grow. Everything will kind of start to change. And so the sooner you can kind of make the adjustments or the heat moldings um, early on so that you're not creating more problems or more obstacles, I think is always a really good way to go. Um, but yeah, but I think, you know, again, for all of you, the parents out there, we just want to make sure that you're aware so you can help best prepare your kids. You know, I know we know we, you want um, to do the best for your kids. So these are just some tips and some things to think about um, as we start to get back onto the ice. Um, and for the coaches too, you know, I think it's just, again, it's more information for you guys to help your, 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 your uh, skaters and parents. Um, you know, I know that a number of the, the shops are open for like appointment by appointment only or different things like that to, to see any of you that need some help or need to, you know, have some adjustments or a heat mold done to your, to your skate, you know, don't just throw them in the oven. You have to have a proper heat mold. <laughs> like, no, 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 don't just, don't just throw them in the oven. It's not the same thing. So there's um, different things that, you know, you want to do uh, in advance. And that's why we thought this week would be a good time to have the discussion um, with some of our favorite folks here, you know, and to help give you guys ideas. Um, Coach Diane DeLu, sure, yes. Diane, I wasn't sure if that was in response to, um, if there's another question that you may have, or if this, yes. Oh, Emily um, has your hand up. Emily, do you want me to unmute you? Would you like to ask a question? I'm gonna unmute you now. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. I'm just a I'm just a parent of a skater. Well, uh, as you guys talked about the uh, skates, when you get back on ice, Coach Diane has been helping the kids to practice off ice with skates on yes. on Saturdays. So uh, I just want to take this opportunity to invite uh, you know young skaters or eighty skaters uh, to join her of ice practice on Saturdays with skates on. She calls it the power pack, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it helps. Uh, I mean, it helps, uh, you know, during this uh, crazy time, unknown time, and uh, mm -hmm. prepare yourselves before the rings uh, reopen again. Mm. Yeah, well, Emily, th thank you so much for sharing that with us, and Coach Diane, Awesome to hear that you're doing that with this with the, the skaters. That's why Coach Diane is as awesome as she is. She can always you know, see what um is is you know happening uh, and, and and help to anticipate for all you, you parents and kids out there, all you skaters out there about what to what to do. And um, I think that was that's really brilliant. So thank you, Emily, for sharing that with us. Um, did anybody else have any more questions for our guests? that they want to ask specifically. Um, Alex, there's somebody. Is there somebody? I'm trying to, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm trying to find the raised hand at the school. <laughs> Amber oh, Lynn. I don't see. Yeah, Amber Lynn. A Amber Lynn? Amber Lynn, would you like me to unmute you? I believe so. Okay. <laughs> uh, unmute. 
Unmute. <laughs> okay, lower hand, Amber. Oop. Okay, I'm gonna try it one more time. There you go. Oh, okay. I think it's unmuted. Uh, Amber, did you have a question to ask our guest today? Oh, or maybe that was just a an accidental raised hand. I'm not quite sure. Well, if you don't, no problem. Um, I'm going to put you back on mute. Okay. Maybe, maybe they can type it. Can they type it in the type it in the chat? Chat box. If you guys, yeah, if anybody has any questions, please put it in the, the chat box. Um, and I was going to mention too for all of you on today. You know, we do have uh, additional Zoom classes for the different levels. So if you're Snowplow Sam or your Basic One or Basic Six, that on the um, the our website we have different uh, recordings for you too. So you can practice some of those skills that you learned in Learn to Skate, and you can uh, practice them at home with different kinds of exercises. I think Michelle did some. Uh, all of our staff uh, did some different clips for you guys to help practice at home um, in terms of you know, getting that same kind of movement, getting your body going, um, as well as some additional classes for off ice jumping and, and things like that as well. And uh, we have some live Zoom classes. Everything's on um, the website and those classes are all free um, to say, you know, to he help, help you guys during this difficult time to help keep you active and, and keep your skating dreams alive. So I um, just wanted to mention that, that all of that you can find on our website. So parents, Feel free to peruse through that and sign up for anything that that uh, that you guys would like to do. Yes. Okay, uh, Diane. Oh, here we go. Here's some questions. Come. Oh gosh, now they're coming in. All right. Uh, time frame to open the rink, Lakewood, please. Okay. I. <laughs> I'm gonna stick to more to <laughs> to the strength and conditioning side of things, but we are getting very close to reopening. I know the frustration. We are frustrated as well with, of course, the process, but we want to make sure that first and foremost, we, we do everything in, in the, the right way and keeping our the safety and health of all of our skaters and parents and employees and coaches and staff, um, you know, uh, as the up as a first priority, but we will be getting some information soon about a date. So just be bear with us. Um, and we will we will answer that. Uh, but yes, but I'm so excited though that to hear that you're you know that you want to know when we're going to open, and that's that's great news for us to know that you guys are also eagerly waiting for the, the doors to open up. But we'll we'll get back to you soon, Kelly. Don't worry. Um, Diana, uh, skaters can also check with their skating school director for rink specific Zoom classes, which aren't on the website. Yes, in fact, uh, that's true. So thank you, Diana, for for uh, reminding me of that. For all of you that are out there, you know, if you want more of a personalized Zoom class um, experience that, you know, whatever rank you're in, just talk to your skating uh, manager, your skating lead, um, you know, whoever's in there, they can point you to a specific coach that was probably best for your level, depending on your age and your experience and your level about, you know, who's the best fit for you to do some of these off-ice classes. Um, and that would be great. But thank you, Diana, for reminding me of that. And because we are, all of our staff coaches are also hosting, many of them are hosting their own Zoom classes that focus in on specific areas and um, that may be perfect for you. Um, and then Amber said, oh, sorry, you can't hear me. I want to know, should <laughs> Amber on the Summer Classic March Mayhem competition happening in August? Um, so, so Amber, thanks for asking. You know, we, we of course, uh, like Mariah was saying, there's a lot of competitions that are, you know, kind of had to be suspended or on the international circuit, you know, there's a, there's specific deadlines. And I think July 1st for the JGPs, August 1st, for the Grand Prix. So on the, on the international side, all of those things, oh, let me just admit somebody. Okay. All of those things are to be determined. And also within the U.S. too, that we're still trying to have our competitions, but we want to give the kids enough time to be able to get back into it and compete safely and effectively. So it's important to work with your coach on what they feel is the right strategy for you. For everybody, it's gonna be different. It depends on you know, what the, how much time you have um, and the resources to be able to, to come back and skate. Um, but that's why we were hoping that for, you know, with things like today, 
that perhaps it'll help to, you know, give you some clarity and some guidelines and some tips on how to think about it. But yes, but the summer classic has been moved to, um, I think Chris is on the call, August 21st to the 23rd is where we're looking to now move that date. So it'll be a little bit um, later to give your skaters more time to practice and warm up. Um, and, and that March Mayhem will also be held uh, as well as Sunshine Skate all within that same weekend um, at Anaheim. So, so for those of you that are out there, um, you know, that may help, may help you, but that gives you an extra three weeks of time to prepare because we want to make sure that the skaters are all safe before they, you know, go and, and try to show their stuff that we, we, we don't want to rush that process. Like Mariah was saying, you don't need a rush, build it one step at a time, be, be mindful and, and, and conscientious when you do that. Um, anything that you guys wanted to add to that, by the way, I'm just, I'm just spouting off in response to these questions. <laughs> but, <that> you, <laughs> so is there anything else that you wanted to add in? You know, Alex, the one thing that you and I talked about it last week is, you know, hey, everybody can't wait for the rink to open, it, but it's, it, the regulations change seem daily and it makes it very hard. It's, it was hard for us. We had to follow different directions and we've changed. We have to, we have to stay on this stuff every day. And, and I don't think sometimes the parents don't see that of like all the extra work that we have to do behind the scenes to figure out what's right to keep our athletes safe and keep our staff safe. You know, and it, it, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating for everybody. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's making sure we all do the right thing and keep everybody safe. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes it feels like as things start to open, like maybe it's still not an issue. It's still something that we're all experiencing. And even though, you know, we all feel healthy and we're, we're good, there are people in our community who are at higher risk. And so we just really have to make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe and keeping the people who are at higher risk safe as well. Yes. No, absolutely. I think, you know, we as a, as a skating community and a, and a California community, we got to take care of each other. And I think that's the main thing for everybody just to remember, you know, we, we love the fact that we all love skating, but your safety and health is, is too important to us just to compromise that. So, um, yeah, there is some more questions here. Uh, it said something about specifically instead of three events, maybe you should just do one or two. Uh, just to clarify for Amber, it's it, those, those three different events that weekend are just skewed for different levels. So the summer classic is for the, what we call IJS for the higher level competition. Then the March mayhem will be for the middle, uh, the lower level for the 6.0 events. And then the summer, um, um, uh, the sunshine skate, excuse me, is for the ISI uh, leveled events. So that's why there, they won't be any conflict and it'll, the schedule will be very, very specifically drawn out um, as we're working, you know, the club is working very hard on the protocols for setting up that competition. But we wanna make sure that everybody has some events to look forward to when we are able to get back on the ice. Um, and then what is one competition this summer? The, well, that is, that is one of them. So, um, but, but just to let everybody know for locally, we have that event happening um, in, in Anaheim, the week of August 21st to the 23rd. Um, Golden West will be at Great Park the week of September 4th through the 6th. And then after that, I believe Pasadena is having a competition as well. So those are the three competitions that are kind of happening that are still on the schedule for this, um, this season that, you know, we're, we're hopeful that we can still make those happen for all of you. Um, and then Sherry asked, on the first week back, are you capping the number of on ice hours each day you're going to skate. Do you have a plan or are you just going to see how your body reacts? Um, I think that's more for Mariah. Is that, is that correct, Sherry, that you wanted, would like to know for Mariah, like how would you, <laughs> you know, what does that look like? But yeah, you guys have to remember, Ma Mariah is, you know, a very elite athlete. So <laughs> the way it shows up for her, maybe different for, well, you know, one of, one of us on here today, but, but yes, Mariah, if there's any thoughts on that, like, you know, how many hours, like, do you do an yeah. hour? Or yeah, I would, I mean, I think it, like Chris said, it goes back to what you were doing before. So, you know, before this ha all this happened, right before I was getting ready for world. So I was spending a lot of time on the ice. Um, so I would definitely go and cut that back a lot. Maybe do, I don't know, like 30%. 
of what you were originally doing good idea. somewhere around there and then build back up and i wouldn't increase weekly like if you're doing an hour one week maybe do an hour a day one week you do maybe an hour and a half the next week slowly build back up you don't want to um overdo it and and you know if you're constantly if you're going up you know an hour a day for several weeks and you know so quickly that might be a little bit much for your for your body to take um so i would just say it's individual of course it goes back to just doing what you feel is right but um you know, even just, I think, going back and doing some of the edge work, you know, everybody can feel sore and tired from that. Again, we haven't been in our skates. We haven't used our skating muscles, you know, in a while. So um, really making sure that give yourself maybe a day or two of doing 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. And then you might say when you get to like Wednesday, for example, you might say, hey, you know what? I need to take today a little bit lighter so that I can manage the rest of the week. That's something that I do when I'm training at full capacity before this happened, I always took Wednesday lighter. I generally wouldn't even jump on Wednesdays. I would, you know, train hard Monday, Tuesday, give myself an opportunity to kind of recover on Wednesday and then go harder towards the end of the week. Um, but, you know, again, it goes back to individual, of course, and I would say do less than 50% of what you were doing before to give yourself a really great, I mean, it's, it's so much better to do too little right now than too much. I think one thing, Alex, too, is when we start to progress, right, as we go, and we're going to want to progress either adding days in the week or adding hours in our skate or time in our skate. So what I'd rather not see is, hey, let's say we're starting off three days a week for an hour. Let's not that second day go or second week go to five days a week for two hours. You know, either go, hey, we're going to go from, you know, maybe three days a week for an hour to four or five days a week for an hour or hey we're going to go three days a week but instead of going for an hour we're going to go for an hour and a half and not increase both the time on the ice and the frequency of times on the ice do one or the other and, and if, again that's personal that's up to you and a lot of it some of it might depend on scheduling or coach availability or whatnot but it, trying not to do both of increasing the amount of days per week and increasing the amount of hour or time on the ice at the same time do you want to increase one or the other yeah now that's a really good tip so ho hopefully for everybody out there that you know that that will make sense for for those of you especially those of you with coaches to really work with your coaches on what that looks like um a few more questions oh there's about summer camp uh, for those of you that are out there we uh we will take this summer we'll get back to you on summer camps um as we progress and once we reopen officially, and then we can kind of see if we can still have something for later in the summer, you know, where is our hope, um, but we'll have to, um, I know it's always a hurry up and wait or wait and hurry up, but that's always that process, but we will get back to all of you with some information as soon as we can make some uh, decisions. But thank you for asking, but yes, we would, it's something that we would still have on the, on the, uh, the slate that we would like to still have happen uh, this summer. Um, and then Carrie asks, what is um, uh, the best on ice exercises for skaters to do on the ice their first day back? You know, maybe new skates and new blades. If there's anything, you know, um, I'm sure Carrie probably it's uh, depending on the, on the level and I'm not sure what level you're, you know, necessarily suggesting, but I don't know, Mariah, is there anything that maybe you would suggest for like, you know, if it's not the learn to skate level, but maybe the more of a, a slightly yeah. more mid tier? Yeah, I think the, you know, our sport is called figure skating, right? So we really want to make sure that our skating is the, the best quality that it can be. I think, you know, sometimes now our sport is getting so jump focused that sometimes we're losing a little bit of the quality of skating. And everybody has the ability to do great edges. Um, just like how you spend time on jumps and spins, you should truly spend time on your your edges, your footwork. I know for me, we all have clusters in our footwork, and if you're at a lower level, you'll be doing clusters someday, and those are just three turns connected together. Um, you're working on cadence, so your rhythm, your knee bend, doing those kinds of things, practicing your turns. Um, you know, it's like you, if you look at a, if you think of a, a free program, um, a triple or a double combination or a jumping pass can be worth just as much as a really great step sequence, and maybe the step sequence can even be worth more. So don't forget that those things have a lot of value, and 
you know, truly everything is related in painting and I see everything coming from edges. If you have great edges, you'll have great spins. If you have great edges, you'll have great jumps. They're all connected. So um, that's just the basis of everything that we do. Um, it should be something that you love to do. Um, and if you don't love to do it, you should do it even more because all of the things that I don't like to do on the ice, I try and force myself <laughs> to do more. Um, but, you know, and it's something that can also be just like really relaxing. There's no pressure. There's, it doesn't have to be intense. Just work on skating. Enjoy the feeling of gliding because I think we've all probably missed that. It's something that's so special. Not many sports get to have that sensation. Um, so just really appreciate and maybe this whole experience can just help us to be, you know, more present. It wasn't like we all went into the rink one day and expected the next day for everything to be closed. So really take advantage of now you have this time on the ice, enjoy it, be present, and um, it'll improve everything else. Great, 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 great. Thank you. Oh, she, yeah, Kara says, perfect exclamation point. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it looks like there's not really more questions. It's just a clarification from Emily. Yes, Emily, you're correct that the Sunshine Skate that was in July got moved to that, that weekend, as I mentioned, the 21st or the 23rd. So the three different events will be combined into one event on the 21st or the 23rd. But don't worry, it's just going to be broken up by different levels. Um, so that's hopefully something that you all can look forward to. Um, any other questions from anybody? I know we've been on for about a good 45 minutes. Um, uh, is there any other questions? I think we're, I think we're good. You know, Mariah, I just wanted to ask you with everybody here, it's not even really a question for um, uh, related necessarily to returning to the rinks, but just watching that, I get chills, I get goosies watching that, that moment in your program. What was that like for you to accomplish that this year? It was so special, I think, for so many people, for so many different reasons, but I just wanted to ask you that. Is there anything you wanted to tell the kids about that moment for you? Well, thank you for saying that. It's, a, you know, I've been competing for a long time and I've kind of always been close to great skates, but maybe not quite had, you know, the perfect skate. And it was like, you know, my coach has always told me, you know, if you, if you, you know, load your gun at some point, it'll shoot, right? So like, if you really train well, at some point, it's going to pay off. So, you know, and I felt like I had been training really well, especially the last three or four years since I moved here to with Raphael, and never quite had that moment. And then it was like, there it was. And so it's, you know, for anybody who maybe gets to a point where they feel frustrated, you know, you have to keep pushing. If you're frustrated, you're almost there. Like almost certainly you're almost there. And um, I just keep going back to how fortunate I feel that I had that experience. Um, I'm so lucky that the crowd responded the, the way that they did. It's, I couldn't even hear my music. There was so much energy. Um, and I remember seeing my parents like jumping and standing in the crowd. I always know where they are. And it was just like, I, I had so much emotion because, you know, it's, we all we all put so much into this and so you know it's when something like that happens it's just so awesome and it makes everything worth it and um you know again i just keep going back to how grateful i was to have that experience i'll have it forever i'm, I'm never going to forget it and the people um all my coaches my the people supporting me all the people watching there on tv made it what it was so it's truly for them and um i'm i'm so proud that i was able to do that at nationals Mm. Well, it was a moment to remember, that's for sure. <laughs> there wasn't a dry eye in the house, you know, so it was, yeah, so I, I, it was fun to, so thanks for letting us um, open with kind of sh uh, sharing that with the, the skaters and families today. So um, anyway, well, everybody, I think we're, that closes it out for today. Um, for those of you that weren't able to join us live, uh, hopefully you're able to watch the recording and you know, um, we hope that this gave you some additional uh, tips and insights on how to safely plan your progression and come, come back into the ranks. So thank you uh, for joining us. And um, yeah, we will get back to everybody soon with whatever information we can get about the exact date for reopening. But um, I again, I'd like to thank our guests, uh, our speakers today, Mariah Bell and Chris Phillips for uh, giving, you know, donating their time, energy and expertise uh, to share with all of you today. And I just want to say thank you to all of you out there 
that came and joined us today and hopefully you had some fun. All right. Okay. Well, everybody will thank you so much and um, stay safe and we'll see you in the rink soon. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody.